the stage, the wonderful Mr. Martin Pilgrim. Hello. Hi. All right. Good, good. Um, it's nice to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here, actually, uh, which is unusual for me because I'm not uh, I'm not normally a very happy person. I actually haven't been happy for quite a long time. Uh, Merry Christmas, by the way. Um, <laughs> forgot to say that. I, I'm worried that I haven't been happy for so long that I've forgotten what happiness feels like. Sometimes I think I'm happy, but it turns out I'm just wearing socks. <laughs> for a moment, I thought that warmth was coming from the inside. <laughs> I've been trying to think of ways to cheer myself up. Uh, I thought about getting a dog, because uh, dogs bring so much joy to so many people, but I don't really like dogs. <laughs> the only thing about dogs that brings me joy is the fact that I'm still young enough to outlive every single one of them. <laughs> that makes me really happy. <laughs> you show me a newborn puppy, I'll show you something I can bury in my mid-30s. My friend, uh, my friend Leon said, don't do your dog stuff at the start, because uh, people like dogs more than they like people. And I said, I like dogs more than I like people. I just really hate dogs. <laughs> I, think, I think the problem is that I feel uh, sort of shortchanged by life. Because I, uh, I was brought up to believe that if you work hard and you study, you'll achieve great things. Right? My favorite book growing up uh, was Matilda by Roald Dahl. Uh, do we know that book? Yeah. yeah. In, in Matilda by Roald Dahl, Matilda, she works hard and she studies, and she is able to move objects with the power of her mind. Now, I worked hard, and I studied, and now I work full-time in a Bristol post office. <laughs> and no matter what I tell myself, the fact remains that moving objects with your mind is not the same as sticking on stamps with your fingers. <laughs> and occasionally your tongue, because you forget they've changed them. <laughs> uh, which is not to say I don't like my job, it's not a bad job. Uh, one of the best things about it is I can walk to work. Uh, but this comes with its own set of hazards. Uh, for example, recently I was on my way to work and a bird managed to shit inside my glasses. <laughs> Now, they say getting shot on by a bird is good luck. For the bird to make that shot, he must have been shot on by another bird. <laughs> yeah, my job's all right, though. It's not exciting, but I have my own adventures while I'm there. They're just quite mundane adventures. Uh, for example, recently I had a customer come in and uh, she posted a parcel. I didn't realize till after she'd gone. Uh, that she'd addressed it to Newport, England. And I started to worry, because I thought if a sort of nationalistic Welsh postman sees this, he might get offended, and he might lose the parcel. So I thought, what I'll do is I'll cross out England, and I'll write United Kingdom underneath. So I picked up uh, this red felt-tip pen that was on my desk, crossed out the word England. But the problem was it was a very old felt-tip, and it was running out. So even after I'd crossed out the word, you could still see England underneath. Only now it also had a perfect St. George's cross <laughs> over the top of it, right? So I, I started to panic and I scribbled more and more red pen and I turned it into fire. <laughs> and then I drew a dragon next to it. <laughs> and I wrote Wales underneath. And I've, I've got a friend from Newport, and I was quite proud of myself, and I told him what I'd done, thinking he'd be impressed. And he said, Martin, you do realise that there's a Newport in Essex. <laughs> Did you check the postcode? And I said, no, I covered it in fire. <laughs> but I shouldn't complain about my job, about my life, really, because... It may not be spectacular, but at the same time, I haven't got any real problems at the moment. Like, my biggest problem in life at the moment 
is that I can't reach my light switch from my bed. <laughs> right, and this is a constant problem for me because basically before I go to bed every night, uh, I will do one of two things. Uh, I either read a book or I masturbate. <laughs> now I should point out at this point it is always one or the other. Because I read a lot of dystopian science fiction and if I was masturbating over that, I think a distant light switch would be the least of my problems. <laughs> but whichever, whichever activity I choose, the end result is the same, and that is that I fall asleep with the light on, and then I'll wake up sort of 10 minutes later and I'm all groggy, disorientated, I've got to get out of bed to turn the light off, and that wakes me up. And uh, recently, I was masturbating before bed. Um, I realised, by the way, thank you. I realised, by the way, that I'm too old for this to be a normal thing to talk about. Because, uh, like a few years ago, it was a genuine hobby of mine, and I'd proudly, I'd proudly announce it. But now I'm not even sure that I necessarily enjoy it. Like, it's just, it's like a, a task that has to be got out of the way to get on with the day. I've started trying to streamline it for efficiency. I've started putting a pizza in the oven before I start. <laughs> just to give myself some sort of deadline. <laughs> anyway, I was, I was masturbating before bed. And even as I was doing it, I was irritated in advance. Because I, I knew what was going to happen. I knew that I was going to finish, I was going to fall asleep, and then I was going to have to get up and turn the light off. And because I was angry, I didn't want this to happen. I kept putting off the moment of climax, right? I kept stopping and starting and not allowing myself to finish. And this meant that when the orgasm eventually arrived, it was much stronger <laughs> than it otherwise would have been. And at the exact moment that I had this orgasm, there was a power cut. <laughs> and I was plunged into darkness. And because I'd been thinking about the light switch at the time, and because of the intensity of the orgasm, the first thought that came into my mind <laughs> as I drifted off to sleep was, did I make that happen? <laughs> and then the second thought, that occurred to me almost immediately afterwards was maybe I'm more like Matilda than I realized. <laughs> now, I may not be able to move objects with the power of my mind, but apparently I can short circuit a fuse box with the power of my own wretched loneliness. <laughs> They made a film about Matilda, and um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a famous scene in it where she discovers her power for the first time, and she dances around her bedroom, moving objects with her mind. And I think, if they were to make a film about me <laughs> and my newfound power, that scene would have a very different tone. <laughs> Just me stumbling around my bedroom masturbating on various electrical appliances. <laughs> and in this film, you'd see me, and I'd stumble around my room, and I'd masturbate on the telly, <laughs> and then I'd masturbate on the laptop, and then I'd masturbate on the PlayStation, and then I'd fall exhausted into my bed. And with one last almighty tug, <laughs> I would turn out the lights, and I'd fall asleep with a big, beaming smile on my face. And the audience would see this, and they'd say, look at him smile. What a happy, joyful man he must be. And then the camera would pan down from my face, over my body, to my spent, flaccid penis. <laughs> and then it'd carry on down my legs, my thighs, my ankles. And it'd come to rest on my feet. And then the audience would realize that I'm not happy after all. I'm just wearing socks. <laughs> That's the end. Thank you.
Martin Pilgrim, ladies and gentlemen.